Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today is going to be the second video in the high tech from scratch series. The first video hasn't come out yet, so I haven't seen your comments on that video yet. But what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to continue the idea. And then if there's any feedback from you guys on the first episode, we'll try to implement that in episode three, and then we'll just continue to do so. So if you comment on this video, we'll implement those things in episode four and so on and so on. But for those that haven't seen the first episode, we basically made this. This is uh, basically, I would say, three ideas together. And honestly, right now, as you can hear, it sounds very, very busy and not really well defined. So what we can do is we can take some of these ideas and try to make something just a little bit better defined from it. What I'll probably do in terms of the start of the writing process is just starting here with a new kick and bass and this is probably going to be the spot where i'm going to have uh, like the first drop uh, right here i would say so i'm just going to write that out and what we need is really a first idea for the first drop so let's see what happens if we just combine like these two elements here To me, that works uh, in terms of the the elements that we have in there. It's not too aggressive from the start. And obviously, that's not what you want. You don't want to go in there and immediately have a lot of things going on like we have in this section now. For example, I wouldn't start the drop with a glitch loop like this. What I will probably do is turn this into a 16 bar idea. So we'll duplicate this over. I'm going to have a riser right there. And then all we need to do is go into some of the automations and just change it up a little bit. Let's remove this because we don't really need that. Just basically making sure that the idea changes a little bit over time. We'll also change the shifter. That's like the main tonality of the sound, I would say. I do still think that we want to rise up here. So we're going to do that in a different way where we're basically having this like two segment riser, I would almost say. And then right here where we go into the next like section of the riser, right? This is where the automation point is. We will implement our fill. Now let's see if we need to change a few things here as well. Uh, again, we just have a macro so we can just kind of mess around with it. Maybe change up one or two MIDI patterns as well if we want to. So now we have basically the same idea, but just twice as long. Now, before we continue, I do quickly want to say that if you enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving a like. And if you're new here, make sure that you're subscribed. Also, if you want to support me financially, you can do so by checking out my products on Gumroad or checking out my Patreon page. On my Patreon, you will find lots of different perks, including discount codes for my products. So if you're considering buying some of them, then maybe you should check out my Patreon first to get a little bit of a discount. Links for both of them are going to be in the description. With that being said, let's get back into the video. Okay. Then I would say we go into a little bit of a higher energy part. So what we can probably do is let's start by just trying out what it sounds like with the closed half here. By the way, I've given everything a name, so it should be a little bit more clear how the project XP works. But now going into the second section, we got something like this. It's a little bit boring, so what I would do is probably implement, first of all, a bass melody in here.
let's combine these together so that we can do some more interesting stuff over here. Um, To be honest, it sounds kind of cool. I like that. Uh, it's nice and like flowy up and down. So we just duplicate this over. And what we can do is maybe decide on a little bit of a cool like semi fill, I would almost say. Maybe something like this. And then what I'll do is duplicate this over. And then have another node here, which is going to, I guess, be an octave here. Let's make sure that the LFO is turned off here so that we get the sound actually coming through. And this is probably a good place to introduce our snare. Let's then work on a fill idea. Here I would probably do like a double kick and then really fast. What would be cool is to maybe go, let's uh, consolidate this. The idea is to take this and then pitch it down, I guess. Let's make sure that that works in terms of the key. Okay, I'm going to turn everything down by one semitone. So that works with the key of our track. I like it. I like it. I like where this is going. I think it might already be time to introduce our like glitchy loop here and it would be cool to just duplicate this over and have that work i don't know if it will honestly i like the sound i just don't like the idea of it like how it's mixing with the rest so maybe it's a better idea to make something new for that. And uh, a cool thing that you can do, I guess, to make like a random almost sequence uh, is, let's say we set this to one over eight and we want to play eighth notes here. I'm just going to modulate Y with this LFO bus and set this to not on random. And I'm going to do the same with this one. Uh, we do need to set it to a different bus and also different not on random. So both of these are kind of triggering different points. One is going up, the other is going uh, down. And you can see we just are modulating over the whole range. So let's assign this quickly to the filter so you can see what that does. We go like so. We get these different like modulation shapes of it. And we can just reset like the modulation every time we play a different note. So let's use a bandpass instead and we'll make this fairly like watery sounding, I guess.
is you can hear sometimes you get this very extreme kind of pluck or slide up or slide down. And other times you get a very, uh, almost like a static note if the modulations happen to land on like the same height. And that's what's going to create the kind of random feeling of this sound. So what I just quickly did is set up a macro that is going to change it to a quarter note in Mac. And what we can, for example, do is something like this and then go down again. So you get something like that. And I think that works a little bit better than the glitchy thing that we had before. I'm not sure if I already want to introduce this musical like idea. This is the melodic thing here. Let's say that we put it on there and let's just hear what that does. I guess this is an element that should be in maybe a little bit of a less energetic part. Uh, so we'll have this sitting right here. And this is just going to like come in and play for a little bit. And I guess we are going to have one more section, which is like really high energy here. And then maybe let's do it like this. Let's then do an A part section here to like finalize it. And then it's going to go into this part here. So the way that that's going to work is... Uh, actually, let's copy over this one because this has the melody in it. We'll duplicate that over. Let's make a melodic change here so that this is more interesting. Maybe something like this, just like the opposite of what we did before. And this is going to have another high energy synth. This is also going to be the spot where we're going to have all of the drums, I guess. So let's just copy this over there, 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 and there. We'll make space for our parts here. Uh, I might want to keep the snare in here to kind of close off the phrase. Here's a different idea. What if we do this? Okay. Seems that we have ended the phrase a little bit on the strange part there. This is good. Uh, we're gonna have a little bit of a longer fill in here so that there's a lot more time to transition into the like lower energy elements that are going to be in here. As I said before, this is going to still have like an eight bar transition section. And then we will actually go into our like melodic idea here. So it's gonna look something like this in terms of arrangement. And of course, there's going to be atmospheres and one shots and all of that good stuff on top. And uh, what I really want to do is essentially go into, I guess, a small breakdown here, maybe like 16 bars maximum. And throughout that time, I want to do a key change on this. Now, it does look like we're already modulating the pitch bend. How am I going to then do a key change on this element? I guess the best way to do it then is through M Transformer. So let's put that here just to be sure. 
and then this other phone needs to be in front of it because I don't want that to desynchronize in any way. Uh, this introduces a little bit of latency. So you need to do that because it's a Melda plugin. Uh, this is Ableton's fault, right? The latency problem is Ableton specific. So if you're using a different DAW, then that's not going to happen. Uh, but in this case, we can just use the pitch shift and let's just say that over time, we want to lower it to, uh, wait, wait, wait. I should use the VST three version for this. Unfortunately, my menu still opens up VST two versions. But if you do the VST3 version with something like this, I'll show you a cool trick here. You can actually just type in your automation. Uh, let's go like this. Let's set it back to zero. And now this is going to be zero. And let's say that we want to go down like five semitones, right? You can just type in minus five and it will actually go down to that minus five semitones amount, right? So the you're able to type in the automation right here in the DAW, which for VST2 you're not actually able to do. I'm just quickly going to put this over here. And now we get this lower vibe here. I really like key changes in high tech. I don't really do it in my other side trends, but I really like the feeling of just kind of going down, giving a little bit more weight to some of the um, elements and then going back up again. I guess the reason for that is because the high tech that I normally hear is like very high in key, like B or C sharp, like one even. Uh, in this case, we are in C sharp zero. So that's very, very dark. I guess for like traditional high tech, what you would often hear is a much lighter baseline in the octave higher. The reason for that is because you have a lot less space for bass oscillations. So in theory, this doesn't really, or it shouldn't have a lot of time to really give that sub bass uh, a chance to shine. I do want to check that to make sure that it's not like just one oscillation. That would be annoying if that was the case, but it does seem like we have a few oscillations happening here. The idea is just that if you were to do it up higher, you can just see that you get a lot more oscillation. You get double the amount of oscillations. So this is what it is now. And before it was like that. So you can see the change that it gives, right? It, it just doubles the amount of oscillations that you have. And therefore you get a lot more power out of your baseline because it just has more pumps for every like bass note. It pumps your chest uh, double the amount of time. But I do think that this will be okay in terms of the dark uh, version of it. It would sound really strange if we were to go down in pitch over this part and then the baseline would be higher than here. So musically, this makes more sense to me, I guess. Structurally, what we would need now is something to fill up this little gap here and then something to transition. So I guess it's time for uh, a little bit more sound design. A cool thing that I've been doing is using the text-to-speech and you can just type in some random text like this. It will generate this gnarly looking waveform for you and you can use that as your grid synth. So let's set this to a bar. Let's just go like randomly, I guess not even holding uh, alt for the snapping, just holding shift like this. And then we assign that to the wavetail position. Let's lower this volume a little bit. Uh, I'm also going to lower this a bit more, I guess. Okay. Uh, I do like that. I do think that this needs to be a little bit more energetic and like high energy. So what we can do is 
one, I could just make this into a plug, but I do like the kind of sustained feeling that it has right now. Uh, overall, I think the sound design just needs a bit more uh, attention. And maybe the same is true for this sound over here. So we get something like that. Uh, we'll use uh, something here. It's a little bit boring over time now. So that's something to fix. We can do that with kind of like a rising flanger uh, sound. I don't really know what this is, but. It might be cool to modulate this randomly with maybe the chaos oscillator, which does mean that we need to turn this into one long note, I believe for it to just kind of continuously generate random stuff. Otherwise, I think it resets every time you trigger a note. So don't really like how this Chaos 1 kind of works in terms of its randomization. Dada did explain to me that this is something called a Lorenz attractor, which is, or supposedly is a little bit more musical than your just kind of random generator. But to me, it's, I guess, too musical in the sense that it just, you saw before, how it just kind of oscillated around this point for a very, very long time. It didn't really want to move. Maybe I just need to change like the Hertz. I guess having it too high will just cause it to be really chaotic. Yeah, so that faster oscillation. I guess the way that it works is that there is random points and then there's like this this almost like sine wave oscillator on top, which just makes it wobbly. And I don't want the wobbly part to be faster. I just wanted to change random position faster. Uh, but unfortunately, that I don't think that that can be done in any normal way. So what I'll do instead is use whatever I used, I guess, here for the pitch band. This is the kind of random generation that I really, really like. So uh, we'll set this up like this. This is going to go here. And we can actually tie this to, let's say one over eight. And now we get a little bit more talking synth out of it. Uh, I'm going to give this a bit of drive and let's see what happens with this thing here. So I feel like then it becomes a little bit more pronounced so we can open that up over time. And what I also would want is another filter which is just going to be the same kind of flanger but just kind of like rising up. Uh, we'll go maybe like this. In this case, we're going with a comb filter and I just wanted to just change the texture over time, always rising. I think this other sound is taking over too much or this other filter. So we just do like this. So now we have something like this. And let's use an EQ to just kind of filter out that mess that's going to be in there. I guess this is already okay, but it would be cool to sometimes have like a little bit of a glitch sound to it. For that, we can use our glitch plugin, uh, Deep Blue Glitch. This is the standard kind of glitch plugin that I like to use. So I'm just going to turn this on in a few predetermined spots, like in the fills, maybe something like this here.
And I actually really like how this came out in terms of all of the rhythms that it's using. One of the cool things about this plugin is that it's seat dependent. So with the zero seat and the exact time that we're playing in here, we should always get a very similar kind of sound. It's going to change from time to time. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to freeze this actually. One of the things that I've noticed that Ableton has trouble with with these plugins, because this is a 32-bit plugin and it's uh, bridged, it tends to cause problems when I'm exporting things from time to time. But now we have something like that. I quickly want to take this here and just slide it forward. So that it matches with what the kick is doing. One of the things that I've noticed in high tech, which is very important, is that you have matching rhythms between, for example, the kick and bass and the drums, the kick and bass and the synth and the drums and the synth. Like there's a shared rhythm every once in a while that just ties everything together. Because everything is so glitchy and everything is so complex and always like changing very quick modulations, very quick changes, you do want some kind of stability. And I think that's one of the reasons why I don't like this glitchy synth is because it doesn't really match with the rest of the track in that way. Uh, and that's why I've turned it off as well. And something like this, for example, this synth that uh, I now want to improve a little bit, it's much more tied to the beat because it uses that 8th note and then 16th note modulation very strongly. So it's tied much more strongly to what is happening with, for example, the kick and bass and in this case also the drums and stuff like that. So I want to improve this. The way that I'm going to do that is I am going to go into uh, the chains here and I'm just going to duplicate this. And then you can set one to left, let's set 40 and then one to right. Because we're using randomization in this case, it's going to generate different signals left and right. I personally think that that's a really cool idea, really cool sound. And, uh, I'm not really scared about the mono compatibility of this. Uh, to be honest, it's going to probably sum together fine when you sum it to mono. Let's actually hear. Yeah, you're just going to have the two modulations kind of imprinted on top of each other. And it almost sounds like it has kind of like a form and feeling to it. What I would like is to get a little bit more grit out of this. So I'm going to uh, first of all, get erosion. So we get that nice kind of high frequency spike that you usually associate with bit crushing. What's cool about erosion in sign mode when it comes to generating this high end is that you have a little bit more control over it than your like average bit crusher, in my opinion. You have this 2D like pad that you can really use to shape where you want this higher frequency content to be. What might be cool is to use a LFO here and we're just going to set this to sample and hold mode. So random and then uh, it's in sample and hold mode and we can set this to a quarter note, set this to the frequency. Let's just make sure that it doesn't go all the way down. So we'll limit it to maybe the, the higher part here. And now what you get is you get that strange volley texture that happens when you put a bandpass signal through a Redux or a bit crusher or something like that. Essentially, as I said, this is basically a bit crusher, but you have a little bit of a different control over the way that it works. Personally, I like the sound that we're getting out of it. What I would like as well is to have maybe a few overarching sounds, because now we're just kind of switch here, switch here, and to me, High tech seems to be a little bit more chaotic than your kind of standard way of arranging things and stuff like that. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to create kind of like a sequence like we have here in the sense that it's just like a one shot, but playing so many times that I would consider it a sequence. Maybe we'll do something like this, where we just go. Like that, for example, and we'll use the tones from the tone spec. The very first tone from the tone spec 0001 is actually a very nice gritty FM type sound. Uh, let's set this to zero. Obviously, it's very boring now, so we just want uh, maybe like an extra note here. And then we'll add like a few double notes right here. So I think we're getting there uh, in terms of our main sequences for this part. I'm going to close out of the sequences and I want to start, you know, just spicing things up with in terms of like complexities and mainly the first thing that I like to do is crashes. I found personally that in high tech crashes seem very, very important. And one of the crashes that I like to use is from the Psychedelic Intelligence 2 pack. It's these short crashes here, mainly I think the nine. Yeah, the 10 is a little bit like noisy, but this has a nice crash texture to it. And what's cool about this is that something like this works really well, where you just add a fade and you get it on the kick. So that just adds like that nice high energy splash. And then for example, we would maybe want a reverse crash into here. Then what I'm looking for is a very high kind of feeling crash. Something like that, but maybe pitched a little bit higher. Some of the things that I also like to do here is, for example, this, where you just layer the crash on top of some of the kicks. So what that will do is it will just add a bit of extra energy before you go back into like uh, a drop or something like that. This is obviously this works well when you're going into something like a fill or something like that. It just adds a little bit of extra importance and it really makes this part like rise up a little bit. That being said, we do need some more like actual risers. And I'm not a fan of just taking the same riser or downlifter over and over again. Uh, we haven't used this downlifter here, so we'll probably place it like right here. It's actually not worked correctly. 138. So now it matches exactly 
our tempo. And that's what you want. So these are both like tonal in the sense that they have a very strong tonality to them. I would like to have some normal like noise ones. And the way that I've been making those is from the cashmere pack. I think volume four has it in the sweeps. When you go into sweeps down, you have these nice clean ones. Something like that. Uh, let's go with this one here. And I actually like to use these in reverse as risers more than I like them as downlifters. And maybe something like this, just to rise up to this point here. It's kind of hard to tell exactly where you want a riser like this to end. Sometimes it goes up too high and then it feels like it loses all of its power. But this seems to work well. To make this part more interesting, what I'm going to do is actually add like a transgated atmosphere here. So we'll write out a simple atmosphere. We're doing the same idea as we're doing here. I just want like a different beginning wave so that the texture is a little bit different. A cool thing that I've been often doing for my atmospheres is something like this, where you just select like a small bit of saw wave and, oh, let's actually go uh, gained like this. We add a little bit of extra detuning to it and you get this kind of already atonally sounding sound. Let's see what that looks like on the spectrum. You can kind of see that it has this very strong bandpass feeling, as in it selects a little area of the spectrum. And that's going to be where it's playing. Now the cool thing is obviously playing with the shifter. That's really what makes like psychedelic textures work. So that's basically going to be the idea. I guess I'm just going to keep it simple and like go down and up again. Let's add a couple of risers to there as well. Uh, good idea for these type of sounds is to make sure that you consolidate it because it's going up. You always want it to like end at the right spot. You don't want the sample to be like offset here or something like, and that is something that can happen if you don't have it like set to the beginning, like we have here. So. For that reason, I just like to take a sound like this and just completely consolidate it so that I know that it's going to be in time if I align the front, it's also going to be aligned at the back. So here we can use the same sample, it's going to start playing from here, and then as you can see it rises exactly to the points that we're interested in, which is where the fill begins. To be honest, I like the idea of having the snare like every four beats, like we have here. I think it worked with that pattern very well, but maybe it's a good idea to double the speed right here. 
that's also going to increase like the energy level here and we don't need another sequence to actually make that work so something like this would be how you would do that To prepare the listener for that, I am going to use the snare in the fill as well here. Okay, right here it does sound off. Little bit of a consideration here is that I don't like that much mid range on the sweep. Okay, so right here now we should have our first like segment almost ready in terms of like the basic musical idea. What I would want is a few more one shots in here. Uh, now I know that we do have like this part here and I guess the atmosphere here. But what I would like is a few more short atmospheric almost like stab things. And as I shown before, there's this cool trick that you can do with a saw wave and some detune. The other way that you can use that is let's say that you get this and this and we remove that and then we'll gain stage it. Is you can create like very high detune uh, sounds like this. And then you can pitch them them. Maybe far, maybe not so far. I don't really know what's going to work best. Something like that maybe. Just a small pitch bend like this then. That's cool. And then I would like to filter that in over time. Just get something like that. Uh, we'll use delay on that, nice and long. I guess it would be nice to have this tied to the notes. And a very simple musical idea that you can do is just to go like back up. So you go from here to like here-ish, I guess. You get these very two very similar sounds, but you can definitely hear that they're doing something different. Next up, I want another kind of sweep going into this point here, because this is where we introduce a new element. I guess I'm just going to go for a very long kind of like bandpass sweep. The way that I'm going to do that is through one of my wavetables. So I have these BP sweeps in here, and I'm just going to kind of pick a random one. This is cool because it's it's basically just a sweep in a wavetable, right? And you can just choose the different texture that you want. Maybe something like that has a little bit of an FM texture to it. I like that. And we'll just go... like this obviously we don't want it to mess with our low frequencies so we'll go like this and then eq it Ah, we have a little bit of a problem here. Uh, our key is wrong here, so this needs to be F0. I think some people might have already seen that when I first drew it in and they were screaming at the screen ever since, uh, but now it should be okay. Actually, I should probably also check this one, and this one is actually correct. Okay.
Okay, I like where we're going with this. Uh, what I would like to do is, because we have this musical ID here, this thing here, I don't want to use the same sound in uh, the intro, but I would like to use maybe like um, the same melody. What I'll do is place this in here. And this, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm just going to like reverb it out maybe over here and then transition into what's actually going to happen in the drop here. So maybe what we can do is already make sure that we have a note playing here for this. And then this is just going to go and rise over time. Same with the trans gate here. And we'll also have this filter kind of opening up here so that it's not too aggressive at the beginning. And it should just at some point come in and then smoothly transition into what's happening over here. It is doing that, it's just a little bit too slow, so I would like maybe for it to start here. Personally, I think that this tonal one should probably go here. Something like that, maybe. I'm not even sure if I like this sound to begin with. Maybe if it's a little bit lower. Yeah, it just adds a little bit of going down texture. So what that means is now that we need uh, this instrument here. Okay, so I'm just kind of preset browsing here. This is one of the ideas that we could use. This is from my upcoming pack. Uh, it's really nice because it also has this kind of attacking for, uh, idea here. So we can like increase the attack over time. It washes out nicely. And what that means is that we could do, for example, something like this. We have the mod wheel kind of go up so that we get a little bit of extra filter. So with these three automations, you get something like this. So that's kind of like, almost like a nice, happy intro. And I like the idea of that contrasting with what the same melody is doing later in the sense that this sounds almost like horror music, right? Because it has that pitched, like high octave feeling to it. And this is that very nice, very warm kind of feeling. What I do want to do is, uh, as you can see, I turned off the ambience here, and that's because I want to glitch this up a little bit towards the end here. We're just gonna, let's set like a random seat and we'll set the amount to just go up towards like here, I guess. So oh, I want the amount to be 100 and then the mix to come up.
I like that. Uh, we're going to go up with our delay like that. And then we'll do the same with a nice reverb to kind of smear out uh, the sound a bit. Let's do something like this. Always works. Okay, uh, this does have a long envelope, so I really want to just cut off the sound right here. The way that I'm going to do that is with this little trick where you just use a utility and turn that on. This is just going to make sure that the sound just exactly stops there. So this is going to be like our pre-drop section. And then it's just going to go in here. Obviously, we're going to need more stuff in here. And we're also going to need more stuff in the intro. Uh, for now, I want like a big impact, I guess, right there as well. So we just go to like main impacts here. Maybe let's go for the low one. Maybe this one is nice. Holding Alt, we can exactly have it where we want it to be. What might be cool is to use these lower, like two notes for some chords. I want to do maybe like, almost like reggae chords, I guess. Now it's gonna be all about music theory, which I don't know. So it would be that. Uh, Oh, this is going to be bad because it's not going to be on the root, I guess. Let's try this. Let's try like that. And then this is going to be lower. So one, two, three, then. These would be the chords then, I think. I would like to have like a real guitar, I guess. Kind of like a reggae guitar, like electric guitar. I don't know if I have that. Maybe in uh, Omnisphere I will. This does sound like it's going to work in terms of the chords. Uh, I just need to find like an actual guitar for it. Okay, so I did find something I think that is very, very cool. Uh, it sounds like this. It has that kind of reggae feeling I would uh, I was going for. Um, actually want to filter in this other sound then. So we start off with this chord like already just being in there and then this is just kind of coming in after it. I like that. I like how it's going from fairly happy to fairly dark here in the span of this time. Uh, it's going to be hard to make that transition work uh, and actually have something cool happening there. What I want to do before is add a breakbeat here. I want to add a sub bass here, uh, which is just going to help us transition as well. For breakbeats, again, the cashmere pack does seem to have some like cool stuff in here.
nice kind of build-up style breakbeat that we have here. I'm combining two different loops together to get that kind of increasing feeling. What would be cool is either have a sub bass in here or we can do bass guitar on the chords, I guess. I don't know how that's going to sound. Let's hope that Omnisphere has uh, something good for that. Of course, it's too high. Not really what I was looking for, uh, to be honest. That's a very low octave. I don't know if that's going to work. Uh, actually, we should probably try... That's not going to work. That's not doing what I wanted to do. So what I'm instead going to do is um, kind of like have a progression that connects these two parts together. Uh, so we'll start going from our root notes up five semitones. So I'm gonna go, so this is the root note, one, two, three, four, five. And then it's just gonna be like a very simple progression down two, down two, and then to our root notes here so that we finish on that. And I'm hoping that if we add like a nice re-space to it or something like that, then it's going to uh, combine or connect these two parts together. Obviously, the octave is all wrong. Okay, let's see if we can turn that into a nice re-C bass line. Kind of like this. What might be cool then is to use the same bass line to open up again for almost like a build. So we're gonna go up plot 13. I want to go up 12 semitones exactly. And then just go up like this. Okay, so the filter is opening up a bit too much here. And then we'll also remove towards the end here, the actual lower frequencies. So now we get something like that. I don't want to do a quick volume check on this. I think it will be fine in terms of the dynamics that I want, but it's always good to check.
Okay, I do really like where this is going. I think that uh, we have a solid idea now for the first like segment of our track. Obviously, I would like to hear your feedback as well, as I said at the beginning of this video. If you think there's something that I can improve, then definitely let me know. But for today, I think I'll end it here because uh, I don't want these videos to be too, too long. I don't know how I'm going to do this again with like the editing and stuff and how much I need to cut out, but I do think that it's not going to be as much as the last time. But I think I'll figure something out. Uh, with that being said, this is going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you did by leaving a like. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. But I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.